Episode number three of Scientist vs. Scientist. In this episode, we will discuss Richard Feynman and Robert Oppenheimer. First, we will discuss Richard Feynman. Richard Feynman was born on May 11, 1918, in New York City, the son of Lucille Phillips and Melville Feynman. His parents originated from Poland and Russia, and both were Ashkenazi Jews. However, in his childhood and all throughout his life, Feynman considered himself atheist, as neither of his parents were religious. As a child, Feynman was motivated by both his parents, mostly his father, to study science, and by the age of five, Feynman was interested in electronics so much that he had a laboratory in his house where he tinkered with electronic devices, especially radios, which he liked to take apart and fix. Feynman's father also taught Feynman to question what he read in textbooks and try to prove it himself, which greatly influenced his learning in his later years. When Feynman was nine years old, he got a sister, and the family moved to Far Rockaway, New York. His sister was named Joan, and also shared Richard's fascination with science. Although his mother disapproved, Richard motivated his sister to study science, particularly her favorite topic, astronomy. Feynman started attending the Far Rockaway High School at age 14, and at age 15 started teaching himself trigonometry, advanced algebra, and differential and integral calculus. He also worked to recreate mathematical operators using his own notation, but he neglected other subjects, such as English and history. In his last year at the high school, he won the New York University Math Championship, with a score much higher than the other students. Although Feynman applied to Columbia University, he was not accepted due to his low English and history grades. He instead attended the Massachusetts Institute of Technology and got his bachelor's degree in 1939. He also got perfect scores on the Princeton University entrance exams for math and physics, but again did poorly in English and history. However, he was accepted and received a PhD from Princeton in 1942. At Princeton, Feynman was approached by physicist Robert R. Wilson, who asked Feynman whether he wanted to join the Manhattan Project, the American project to assemble the first nuclear bomb. Feynman agreed, as he saw the Germans as a threat. He was assigned to Hans Baith's theoretical division, and was soon appointed a group leader. Feynman and Baith did work on calculating the yield of the nuclear bomb. Feynman also helped with neutron calculations for a nuclear reactor and discussed ideas with Niels Bohr. In his own words, Feynman said there was nothing to do there, so he entertained himself with cracking his colleagues' safe combinations, drumming in the mason near Los Alamos, and visiting his wife in Albuquerque. His wife, Arlene Greenbaum, was diagnosed with tuberculosis and later died in 1945. After World War II, Feynman taught physics at Cornell University and was so thorough in his work and explanations that he was often called the great explainer because of his ideas that if some topic was not simple enough to be explained to a college freshman, it was not yet fully understood. Some of his ideas during lectures have been implemented in modern colleges to explain complicated ideas simpler. Feynman also enjoyed teaching as a distraction from his uncreative spells. Feynman also taught at the California Institute of Technology from 1950 to 1959 and did significant research in quantum electrodynamics, modeling weak decay, and the physics of superfluid supercooled helium. Most of his work is centered on quantum electrodynamics, and he received a Nobel Prize for his theory regarding the physics of elementary particles. Feynman's work on quantum electrodynamics consisted of two main ideas his path integral formulation, and his Feynman diagrams. His other formulations of quantum electrodynamics were derived from his first and second ideas. The Feynman diagrams are especially crucial to modern-day quantum electrodynamics as they directly translate into formal grammar. However, Feynman did not mathematically prove his second formulation. Feynman also provided a quantum mechanical explanation for Lev Davidovich Landau's theory of superfluidity of supercooled helium. Feynman showed that the superfluid showed quantum mechanical behavior. However, his solution only answered the superconductivity of the supercooled helium. The lack of viscosity evaded him. Feynman's greatest contribution to quantum electrodynamics were Feynman diagrams, 
which he could use to model physics with just several particles interacting in space-time. He also attempted to explain the strong interactions that determine nucleon scattering with what he called the parton model. However, the parton model seemed like an addition to Murray Gell-Mann's quark model. Feynman did not actually dispute the quark model and in fact noted that a sixth quark must exist when the fifth one was discovered. Feynman diagrams are also key in string theory and M-theory, and some aspects have been extended to allow complicated strings and membranes to be simulated. Feynman also contributed to quantum gravity, and while his discoveries by themselves did not contribute much, his methods of calculation paved the way for many further discoveries. He derived the Einstein field equation by analogy with the photon, which has a spin of 1, and a free massless spin of 2. In the mid-1960s, Feynman was asked by the California Institute of Technology to spruce up the undergraduate courses, and Feynman spent three years writing a series of lectures that eventually became the Feynman Lectures on Physics book. In addition to promoting physics with his lectures, he gave prizes to students that solved problems he came up with. In 1986, Feynman was recruited by NASA to investigate the Challenger shuttle disaster. Feynman showed that the O-rings that sealed the fuel tanks became less flexible and more brittle in cold weather and also found that many of the project's top-ranking engineers didn't understand elementary concepts and knew that the chance of a disaster was 1 in 200, not 1 in 100,000 like the managers had predicted. Feynman died at age 69 on February 15, 1988 in Los Angeles, California after an attempt at surgery for his liposarcoma. For his contributions to physics, he received the Albert Einstein Award in 1954, the E.O. Lawrence Award in 1962, the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1965, the Oersted Medal in 1972, and the National Medal of Science in 1979. Now we will talk about Robert Oppenheimer. Robert Oppenheimer was born in New York City on the 22nd of April in 1904 to Julius Oppenheimer and Ella Friedman. Both of his parents were Jewish. Oppenheimer had a younger brother named Frank, who also became a physicist. Oppenheimer started attending the Ethical Culture Society School when he was 7 years old, and when he was 12 his family moved to Manhattan, but he continued to attend the school. Oppenheimer was interested in French and English, but was most interested in mineralogy. His enthusiasm for learning led him to complete the 3rd and 4th grades in just one year and to skip a part of the 8th grade, becoming interested in chemistry in the process. He applied to Harvard College a year late and was accepted. Due to his late start at Harvard and Harvard's policy that required him to take history, literature, and philosophy or mathematics as well as chemistry, Oppenheimer had to take six courses per term. He was admitted to graduate standing in physics during his first year, meaning he could take more advanced classes. He took a class on thermodynamics, which got him interested in experimental physics. In 1924, while Oppenheimer was still attending Harvard College, he was accepted into Christ's College in Cambridge and wrote a letter to Ernest Rutherford requesting to work in the Cavendish Laboratory. Rutherford did not accept him, so Oppenheimer opted for another laboratory into which he was accepted. However, Oppenheimer was plagued by depression while at the laboratory and left after two years. After leaving Christ's College, Oppenheimer attended the University of Göttingen, where he met many other physicists who would later collaborate with him, such as Enrico Fermi and Edward Teller. He received his Doctor of Philosophy in 1927 and moved back to the USA, where he would teach at the California Institute of Technology and Harvard. He returned to Europe for lectures at other universities and to work with fellow physicists that he had met at Göttingen. Oppenheimer made significant additions to the theory of cosmic ray showers and quantum field theory, as well as working with some of his doctoral students on calculations of matters such as artificial radioactivity and the photoelectric effect. He also became interested in the field of astrophysics and published several papers on the subject. Although he only published five papers about physics, the influence of those papers, along with the methods he implemented, reached to tons of other scientists. Oppenheimer was invited to join the Manhattan Project by his friends and colleagues, to which he agreed, but when he joined, 
the FBI became suspicious that he was a communist spy. Oppenheimer had supported communist ideas since before World War II and had testified that many of his friends had been members of the Communist Party. Despite his communist friends, he was allowed to participate in the project and became the coordinator of rapid rupture, meaning his team would work on neutron calculations. Oppenheimer's team helped to design the atomic bomb and created the gun-type weapon schematics. Along with designing the weapon, Oppenheimer and other scientists proposed methods of enriching uranium. After the gun-type weapon had been created, the engineers turned to a plutonium weapon. The initial design was also a gun-type weapon, but it soon became clear that a gun-type weapon would not work with plutonium. Oppenheimer helped to design a new type of weapon, an implosion-style weapon that would use plutonium. On July 16, 1945, Oppenheimer was present near Alamogordo at the Trinity Test, the first artificial nuclear explosion in the world. After the explosion, Oppenheimer quoted a famous line from the Bhagavad Gita, Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. His triumphant yet thoughtful expression expressed his concern of further use of nuclear bombs. Oppenheimer became part of a group of scientific advisors on the wartime and post-war policies regarding the use of nuclear energy to help advise the president on the subject of nuclear energy. After Los Alamos, Oppenheimer returned to the California Institute of Technology to teach and later moved to Princeton, New Jersey to take the directorship of the Institute for Advanced Study where he would seek out aspiring scientists and work with them to solve the most pertinent questions of the age. Under the supervision of Oppenheimer, physicists tackled problems in quantum electrodynamics and regularization. In his last years, Oppenheimer had his security clearance for the nuclear advisors group revoked, spent time with his family in the Virgin Islands, and continued to write and teach physics, touring the world to give lectures. He also joined with Albert Einstein to create an academy that would eventually become the World Academy of Art and Science. Robert Oppenheimer died on the 18th of February in 1967, aged 62, after radiation treatment and chemotherapy in late 1966. Since both of these scientists contributed great things to mankind's understanding of physics, there is no winner, but you can decide for yourself. And as always, thank you for watching the video, and if you enjoyed it, leave a like, a favorite, or you could even subscribe.